This video is sponsored by Setup. Good morning. You've seen the keynote, you've watched the hands-on, you've hopefully checked out our videos. Maybe you were so pumped you even went back and watched the keynote again. Good morning. And maybe you've even got the iPhone 11 or 11 Pro Max in your pocket already. But as that hype is inevitably going to fade away, we're kind of left wondering what's next. And there was a lot of things that have been rumored for Apple that they didn't announce. So as we barrel towards the holiday season, there's a lot of products that Apple still wants to get out to capitalize on that crazy rush. So let me tell you what I think we can expect from Apple before 2019 comes to a close. So let's start with the big daddy and I guess littler daddy. New MacBook Pros in 16 and 14 inch screen sizes with way slimmer bezels and probably the same footprint as the current gen 15 and 13. So aside from thinner bezels, a lot of new things here. Let's start with Face ID. The first time we'll see Face ID make its way out of a tablet or a phone onto a computer and expect that to migrate eventually to iMacs and every other Apple laptop. But perhaps the biggest story is going to be keyboards. Apple's had a lot of documented issues with the butterfly switches since they things first launched in 2016. This should be, in theory, the fix for the keyboard. Gone will be butterfly, we'll have a keyboard that should be functional without sticking issues, having that keyboard replaces. It should be a huge step forward for Apple on the keyboard front. Also a step forward, battery life. When I picked up my first MacBook Pro in 2016 of this new design, battery life was absolutely abysmal on it. It's gotten progressively better with software updates, but we should see much longer battery life due to processor improvements. We should see the next gen Intel processors on board at presumably faster clock speeds as well. I would also expect good or bad, the touch bar to stick around, probably pretty close to its current form. All this new tech with Apple is not gonna come cheap. We've heard a rumored starting price of, I'm cringing for wallets, $3,000 starting price before you go ahead and option that sucker up. And you know Apple loves to charge you for storage, so 3,000 and up, IO should stay the same. And with these 16 and 14 inch MacBook Pros and Mac OS Catalina coming, you're gonna want some apps to sort of supercharge your experience. And if you look at your existing computer, I'd imagine you probably spent a lot of money on individual apps, but you don't have to spend a bunch of money to buy things one by one. So Setup is a pretty cool platform that you pay one fee and you get access to 150 plus Mac apps. So Setup picks the apps that they think are the most useful and helpful for everybody while still giving support to developers and meaning you don't have to buy each one on its own. And the apps from Setup are like apps you would probably already use and, and buy anyway. Things like iStat Menus, Ulysses, and Bartender. Like really top tier apps that sort of help supercharge your Mac experience. If Setup sounds like something you want to try, we'll put a link down below. You get a seven day free trial and you get access to all of the apps and then decide if it's right for you. But I think you'll be glad you found Setup. All right, so reverse wireless charging. This is something that was rumored on the iPhones and even confirmed by pretty reliable sources up until the day before the event when the stories were hitting that Apple was taking the feature out. But what's kind of interesting is the phones are already built. So the theory is that the devices are hardware capable of reverse wireless charging, but software limiting. Supposedly this was done in the name of efficiency. And when it comes to wireless charging, that's not speed, that's heat. I think Apple was looking to avoid another air power catastrophe, so just left it out of the keynote. But we're holding out hope that maybe a software update is going to unlock bilateral wireless charging. I think you're going to be disappointed. I think Apple would have announced it as a coming soon feature at the keynote. It would have sold more phone, people would have gotten excited about it. The fact that they completely ignored it leads me to believe that it is never going to come to the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro line but there's still some hope that maybe we'll see it in the 2020 iPhone. So the next one is a product I was actually expecting Apple to announce at the iPhone 11 keynote, but mark it down, it's coming before the end of the year, trackers. And it sounds a bit ominous, but it's a way to keep track of all your stuff. The new iPhones are shipping with a U1 chip, which makes the phone spatially aware. Apple said it's great for finding people that are close to you for AirDrop, but it's clearly meant for more than making AirDrop easier. 
The perfect pairing of that is with these tiles. The idea is similar to tiles, except you won't need another Bluetooth device to be able to track the location. So you'd be able to put them in your bag, laptop, your kids' pockets at the amusement park. The only big question is how much they're gonna cost. If it's gonna be a subscription service, my bet would be 30 bucks, mark it down before the holiday season. So this one you could take to the bank. We will see new iPad Pros at an October event. And don't expect giant changes. The iPad Pro got a new design about a year ago. What you can't expect, love it or hate it, is that three camera setup on the iPhone 11 Pro lines to migrate their way over to the iPad Pro, essentially making all of your accessories and cases and smart keyboards no longer useful for the next gen iPad Pro. But if you're the kind of person that likes to take pictures, with your gigantic tablet, well, you'll have the option. You'll have the telephoto wide and ultra wide, and it'll do depth sensing for AR. And then obviously the processor improvement that should get the A13X processor. Other than that, wouldn't expect too much. But maybe it'll come in green. So one of the biggest sellers for Apple around the holiday season is the Apple TV. And it's been years since it got an upgrade. It's still rocking the A10X processor, both Apple Arcade being a thing that's coming with Apple TV Plus. It would seem like the Apple TV hardware is ripe for at the very least a processor upgrade. But the flip side of that argument is that Apple's actually focusing on software by other manufacturers. You can see it's sort of the Apple app on Samsung TVs, for example, and you see it coming to other manufacturers. So maybe there won't be any Apple TV hardware update. It'll be mostly software and that'll come to the hardware box. But I'd still put my money on a refreshed Apple TV being a very quiet update, which just suddenly says new processor on the website. So these are all just rumors. Some of this we may get, some of it we may not get. For me though, as somebody who owns seven tiles, I can't wait for the tracker to finally hit the market.